In this video, I will go over numbers for stock photography companies such as Shutterstock and Getty Images. These are the only two companies that disclose their financial statements. Based on the analysis that I go through, I hope we can draw a conclusion whether pursuing stock photography as a beginner or as already someone who got into stock photography worth today. Let's delve into industry numbers right away. Giddy Images and Shutterstock are two publicly traded companies that disclose sales data. Let's start with Shutterstock. Here's a graph showing the number of paid downloads per year. This number is in millions. Early days of stock photography were golden. There was a noticeable growth up until 2018. After that, we see that Shutterstock numbers are going downhill. The growth was negative after that. The number of paid downloads declined from the peak of 188 in 2019 to 167 million recently. This is bad news for contributors. There could be several explanations for this. First, I speculate that the competition is eating at Shutterstock's market share. For instance, we noticed an uptick in sales at Adobe Stock for the past 3 or 4 years. At the same time, our Shutterstock sales were sluggish. Thus, content buyers may have moved from Shutterstock to other stock photography platforms. Next, let's look at the revenue per each paid download. This is how much money Shutterstock gets on average when an image or a video gets downloaded. On the surface, we can see a positive dynamic as the revenue per download grew from $2.23 in 2012 to $4.50 recently. But there was a significant slowdown in the past two years. But the worst part is this. There are too many images and videos chasing customers. Here's a ratio of total stock assets divided by the number of paid downloads. This ratio increased from mere 0.3 in 2012 to 4.7 lately. This is a bad sign. I also glimpsed at Getty Images numbers and they tell a somewhat similar story. Unfortunately, data is available only for the last two and a half years. Looking at this table, we see that there is also a high number of assets per paid downloads. In fact, the number is even higher for Getty compared to Shutterstock. There's also a slowdown in overall paid downloads in the past two years. It is hard to say if this is a temporary or not. So, what kind of conclusions can we draw from these numbers? Before I answer this question, I have a small request. We produce a lot of useful content for photographers like you. Gaining more subscribers gives us even more incentive to work harder. So, I would appreciate it if you could subscribe to our channel. Now, back to answering the question. We can see that the stock photography industry reached its saturation long time ago. This can be expressed in terms of number of content out there, it's just huge, got huge number of stock photos. But what's more worrying is that the demand was kind of stagnant or showing very little growth. In the case of Shutterstock, it was actually declining. And that's a very bad sign that there are too many stock photos, but maybe not so many stock videos, are chasing the same or smaller number of buyers. But why so many fewer buyers, I guess? And I guess no one knows uh, at this point. There could be one explanation that I can speculate about, and it's maybe there are so many stock photos out there that are offered for free, 100% free on many other websites. So maybe some of the buyers, they switched from paid downloads at Shutterstock or other websites, uh, stock photography websites too, somewhere where they don't need something like fancy, they just can download something for free and be done with it. Okay, so another moving part in this equation is AI imagery. It's something that photographers were talking a lot recently. So AI imagery, I think it will be able to replace a certain chunk of stock photo sales in the future. I don't think it will be able to replace all of it, but definitely it will be a competition in certain niches. Another problem that stock photographers will always have to grapple with is the middleman. And by middleman I mean Shutterstock, Getty Images, all these companies that are there to license uh, these photos on our behalf. I mean, obviously they provide a great marketing platform, but they are taking cuts from the sales and they are like any other company, they are there to maximize their profits. So they will be coming up with many tricks to you know, get the squeeze out of the uh, contributors to get more profits in the future. So this leads to another conclusion is that probably we'll see another round of uh, contributor payment reductions. Um, I'm almost 100% sure and positive that it's gonna happen in the next five years. 
And I think certain websites such as Alamy, um, Pond5, they will for sure reduce their uh, kind of high uh, contributor payment percentage, uh, which is currently right now 40% for non-exclusive contributors. It has to come down. I mean, right now, uh, Getty Images is paying 15% to non-exclusive contributors, which is, I think, the industry lowest uh, number. And uh, Shutterstock uh, bought Pond5 uh, a year ago, and Pond5 is paying something that I think more than Shutterstock to pay, is paying for contributors for stock videos. So I have no doubt that Shutterstock will come up with some tricks and uh, some payment schedule that will reduce that 40% for Pond5, which I think is kind of high. I mean, considering what Charlie Stock is doing to its own stock contributors. So what's the verdict for stock photography? As a new beginner who is thinking about getting into stock photography, should you do it? Or as a someone who is already submitting their work, uh, the question is, I mean, should you submit and continue uploading your content to stock photography? Is it really worth the effort? The answer to this question is depends on who you are. If you are a casual shooter, then probably the answer is no, you shouldn't do it. Because succeeding in stock photography requires treating it as a business. By business, I mean you have to come up with certain processes, you have to optimize your workflow, and you have to work on constantly improving and thinking and researching of what sells and shoot those subjects that sell. If you don't do this research continuously, you don't have time, then probably you won't have any success with stock photography. You won't see any major sales or anything that will contribute materially to your bottom line. I mean, it's gonna be just pastime or you're gonna be doing for enjoyment, but I'm not sure who enjoys uh, keywording and titling their stock photos just for fun. So I think having said that, the stock photography can be successful, but it requires con conscious effort and thinking about it as a business as opposed to just casual. You won't have any dent in your sales if you are a casual shooter going for vacations and you shot a bunch of generic landscapes uh, shots and hope that you can profit from that. It's very unlikely. We made many tutorials where we go over how to optimize your stock photography workflow, which should help you. So I hope you can take a look at these tutorials and you, I don't think you will be disappointed. We also come up with tutorials on how to improve your keywording processes and other things that can just generally like different hacks that can improve and speed up your workflow. Also, if you remember this upheaval with Shutterstock a few years back, when they reduce the pay a contributor percent payments, and many contributors got really pissed and many of them just removed all their content and even deleted their account, which is extreme. So we didn't uh, because our livelihood depends on you know stock photography sales. So if we delete our accounts, I mean, there's no income for us. So we stayed. So I think that this uh, presents certain opportunity for opportunistic stock photographer who is willing to you know continue working because all the supply that uh, in the form of those stock photographers who left kind of got its void it's got empty so you can fill that void with your own work if that work actually meets the demand that the buyers um, are willing or uh, are searching for also i mentioned that a large number of stock photos out there is a problem because they are chasing a limited number of buyers. However, I think there's some one mitigating thing about this, and that is that the stock photography platforms, they always like to pr promote uh, fresh content. So when somebody uploads their new stock photos, they take those new stock photos and they can put them at the front of the search page queries. When someone looks for, for example, cat, they put that fresh photo, new photo at the front. And so I think this will mitigate that problem if you're a new contributor and you're worried about it. If your photo is good and you have good keywords, 
then if the, the buyer likes your photo, he, he will definitely see it, at least at the beginning. And if he likes it and he clicks on it and buys it, then the ranking of your photo will start improving and it will show up at the front of all the other stock photos that got uploaded long, long time ago and nobody buys them. And this is something that I always keep in my mind and uh, don't worry so much about those so many stock photos out there on the internet. Instead, I try to focus on having the right keywords and having the good quality of photos. And this comes again, the reminder that it's very important to have a good keywords for and titles for your stock photos. If you don't, the, the stock photos will just not show up in front of the buyer. So learn how to keyword properly. We made a tutorial about that that we linked above and in the description. Finally, I want to mention that even though the, we saw that the numbers for stock photos are huge, there's still a, a, a chance and opportunity with the stock videos. That market is still growing and it's not growing like exponentially and, and very fast. And I think that presents an opportunity for you to work on your stock videos and sell them. We still get very good sales, uh, actually even better for stock videos in certain instances than for stock photos. So if you're a stock photographer and you are submitting stock photos, I would suggest to learn how to take and record stock videos and start submitting them because they sell extremely well. Uh, I think stock videos they have, uh, if you submit them, you have a certain, uh, certain uh, advantage because I think there is less competition in stock videos. It takes longer to record stock videos, uh, to make uh, edits to them and uh, just overall Casual shooter, they just think about stock photos, but not necessarily about stock videos. So I think people, are, stock photographers, are just starting to wake up to that, that the stock videos is a necessary part of the stock photography um, process for them. So I definitely recommend uh, starting in stock videos if you haven't, and if you do submit stock videos, submit more of them. If you look at um, stock photographers on Shutterstock, for instance, or other platforms, um, you see a lot of stock photos out there. And some of them, I mean, they're excellent. But then you switch and take a look at their stock video portfolio, it's really small. Or the video, or, uh, the footage clips are not really high quality and it's something that doesn't stand out. So I think that presents an opportunity and I would recommend stock videos for sure. Also, AI, as we saw, it affected and will continue affecting stock photos. But I think it will not affect stock videos to a great extent, or at least for a while. I mean, look at how difficult it was for programmers to teach and reproduce and create uh, realistic stock uh, images uh, using AI. And they are still struggling, especially with people. But it's going to be even harder for stock videos because it's stock footage uh, consists of just so many like hundreds of uh, stills uh, images. So I think stock video is definitely not going to be affected to a great extent and it's by AI and it's, it's going to take years before something is going to you know, happen and the progress will be such that AI will be, be, be able to produce realistic stock videos. So, so stock videos I would say that not 100%, but they're very robust and more immune to AI competition. If you're thinking about getting into stock videos, take a look at our tutorial that we created on our workflow that we use for stock videos. And we've been refining this process and uh, workflow for many years and try to make it as efficient as possible. Please give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. We'll have many more tutorials on photography. I hope to see you in the future. Thanks for watching.